Welcome to the Low Code Show. I'm your host, Russell Youngblood, and this is episode four. In this episode, we are going to tackle one of the most commonly asked questions as new users are starting to work with the OutSystems platform, and that is, how do I connect OutSystems to an existing database so that I can use that database in my mobile and web application? So if you're new to OutSystems and you'd like to know how to connect to an existing database, let's do it. So before we get started connecting to an existing database, I think it's important to note that as a new developer, whenever you start your free personal edition at OutSystems.com, there's some space allocated on AWS and a SQL Server database deployed. However, many of the developers coming into the OutSystems platform have existing data that they want to work with immediately. So over the next few steps, I'll show you how to connect to an existing SQL Server database and bring that data into your OutSystems mobile and web application. In order to connect to an existing database with OutSystems, here's a couple of things that you'll need. Obviously, first you'll need to have your personal environment set up and then access this environment with Service Studio, the IDE that we use for development. There's another IDE that you'll have access to which downloaded with Service Studio. And that IDE is Integration Studio. Now, Integration Studio is typically used for two different reasons. Number one, what you'll see in this demo, which is to connect to an existing database. And then number two, to integrate with Visual Studio and write your own custom .NET c -sharp code, compile that code, and then use it in the OutSystems platform. So, couple of reasons why you would want to use Integration Studio. Once again, connect to an existing database, and then number two, to extend the capabilities of OutSystems by writing your own custom code. So if you don't see Integration Studio, double check your system and be sure that you can access this IDE for this tutorial. When you open the Integration Studio IDE, you'll find that you need to connect to your environment just like you would have to do with Service Studio. So you'll use the same username and password that you would use to connect to your personal environment with Service Studio, but you'll simply use it here in the Integration Studio environment. Once you've connected, you'll see the user interface that we'll use to create modules to connect to databases and compile custom code for OutSystems. Once you have Integration Studio installed and connected, it's time to go over to Service Center and set up the connection to the database. An easy way to get to Service Center is simply open up OutSystem Service Studio and click on the icon for Environment Management. This will open up Service Center and allow you to access the console. To create a new database, all we have to do is click on Administration. That will take you over to Database Connections. And on the Database Connections tab, we can create a new database connection by using this link. So one of the first things I'd like to point out on this screen is the DBMS drop-down menu, which gives you the option to connect to four different databases right out of the box. SQL Server, Oracle, DB2, and MySQL. Now, remember, if you need to connect to other types of databases, you can check the Forge for custom connectors for those databases. For this example, though, we're going to use a SQL Server database. And if you're familiar with the Microsoft SQL Server database, you may know of a sample database by the name of Northwind. So we're going to go ahead and connect to the Northwind SQL Server database with this screen. I'll need to, of course, have all of the information for the user and the server, and I'll need to go ahead and fill that information out in the form, and then finally click the Create button. If all goes well, I should see that this database connection has been created successfully, and I can always go back and click the tech Test Connection button to test this connection at any point in time. Once I'm finished, I'll just click the Save button, and that should save my database connection so that I can use it whenever I need it. I can go back to the list, and I can see a running list here of all of the different databases that I'm connected to. Now that we know we have this database connection, we can go back into Integration Studio and build the module that will allow us to connect to this database. So here in Integration Studio, first I will give this extension a name. Maybe DB Connect would be a good one. And then over to the left, I'm going to right click on the Entities option and choose the option to connect to external table or view. 
This will open up another window, which is a wizard type walkthrough. And here in this window, I should be able to find the database that I just created the connection for. So sure enough, here's my Northwind database. And if all goes well, I should be able to see all of the different tables and the views within this database. Now, I could add all of these tables and views, or I can just choose a subset of these to use in my application as part of this connector. For this example, I'm just going to keep things simple and choose the customer's table. Once I click the next button, it's going to give me an opportunity to give it a logical database name. And then I can begin to go ahead and generate the entities based on that table in the database. So here over on the left side, now you can see the customer's entity which has been generated from that table. This looks pretty good. So I'm going to go up to the top and I'm going to click the one click publish button. That's going to begin the process of compiling this extension and uploading it to our, our environment. But as I'm going through this process, it's going to give me a chance to go ahead and save this extension to my local drive. So I'll do that by saving it to the desktop, and then I can continue the publishing process. Now, you'll notice there's one last thing that I need to do here. There seems to be a missing configuration. So I know exactly what to do to fix this, so I'll click the Configure button. And here in Service Center, I need to map the logical database name to the database connection name that I set up earlier. Once I've done that, I can click the Apply button, and this should save these changes to the extension. Okay, so now that we have our extension built, I'm going to go ahead and build a mobile application from scratch so that we can use that extension in OutSystem Service Studio. So I'll give it the name Northwind, maybe choose a color, and create a mobile app very quickly. Now, of course, once I create the application, I'll need to create the module. And then the first thing I'm going to do once the module is created is bring this extension in so that I can utilize it in this application. So I'll do a real quick search on producers. And sure enough, you can see I can find the DB Connect extension very quickly, as well as some visuals that show me the customer's entity. Now, one of the things that I like to do is anytime that I change the data model or I bring in an extension or connect to an existing system of record, I always like to publish my applications. And that way it can gener generate all of the scripts and the code necessary to support those new tables in the database and any of that information. And I'll do this before I begin to build out any uh, screens. So we'll give that a second to publish. And then once that's done, uh, I can go ahead and build out a couple of screens. Now, you may be familiar with this accelerator. In OutSystems, I can now drag and drop the visual representation of that table, or in other words, the entity out to the canvas. And OutSystems will build out a couple of screens for me very quickly so that I can see a list of all of my customers as well as link to another screen which will house the details of that customer. So you can see those screens here. And if all goes well, these screens should represent the data from the North, Northwind database, SQL Server database. So I'll publish the changes here quickly. And then we can test this in the browser to see if we can actually see that data coming in from the Northwind database. So the application on the main screen should show me a list of all of the existing customers. And I should be able to click on any of those list items, and it will take me to a detail screen. So there you have it. If you are wondering how to connect to an existing database without systems, you don't have to wonder anymore. And if you like what you saw in this video, please follow on Twitter.com, The Low Code Show, YouTube.com, and Facebook.com, the Low Code Show.